Welcome to the seventh episode of Talk to She. Fuck, how are you? We're sitting in a different way today. Yeah. So interesting episode. Interesting. Why, why, why are we sitting like this? So today we have the first guest of Talk to See. First ever guest of Talk to See. It is a very special guest. It is a lawyer. Lawyer. A lawyer. First lawyer. That H- how did we get a lawyer in the episode? Well, it's because it is actually my dad. So no the guest wonder. today is Alfredo, my dad. Alfredo, how are you, dad? Welcome. Hi. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for the invite. Welcome, Alfredo. Thank you. Awesome having you here. Um, we're going to discuss uh, another book, a second book in, in Talk to See. I actually haven't read the book, so I didn't do my homework. Alejandro read the Now I have to call you Alejandro. I can't call you Falk. No, you can call me Falk. I can call you Falk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Alejandro has read the book, and I'm going to be doing the part of the audience. I don't know what this book is. I, know, I, I don't know the details about the book, but the book is about Sam Walton, the Found, CEO and founder, founder of Walmart. Walmart. Um, how, how did you get about reading this book? How did you get into uh, Wait, how do you get into reading? How long ago do you start reading as a, as a habit, as a hobby? Um, I mean, I, I think I start reading like when I was 12 or 13. Okay. I, mean, I, got, I got bored sometimes at home and I just couldn't go out. So I, I, you know, that time television was very kind of short. We kind of have four channels in TV. That's all we had. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, channels were very poor. So I probably because of that, when I was not allowed to go out or something like that, I probably started reading. My, my dad was a great reader. My mom as well. So I, I guess it was. Did you read in Spanish or English? Uh, I read in Spanish. In Spanish? Mostly in Spanish. Okay. Yeah, I, I I had English classes when I was like five, but I I don't think my my skills were enough to to have any readings in English. When did you start reading in English? Um, probably when I was when I was in high school. What we okay. had that was we had this great teacher uh, in high school who would force us to read our first stuff in English. So I think. It was then that I, I started reading English. Yeah. And then when, when, when I was growing up, my dad always encouraged me to read on a positive way. And I didn't pick up the reading at 12 or 13 like he did. <laughs> we did when like a year ago, basically when we started this channel. When quarantine happened. And one of the first books I read, so like I always say, I started reading because it was a New Year's resolution. I wanted to read more. And the first one I read was Sam Walton. The reason we read this book is because we've always been Walmart fans. We always said that Walmart is like the best store ever. There's a book that my dad purchased many years ago called The Walmart Effect. That explains how the book like change pretty much retail and distribution and everything. And then a few years later, I found out that there was an autobiography. So I purchased it and I read it and I loved it. And then just recently, my dad that, that is here visiting me, he went into my room one day without me noticing because I was, I was outside, I was doing something else. And he went into my bookshelf and he actually grabbed this book. Something that I like, I loved. I love the fact awesome. that my dad just went into my room and like grabbed it. So he started reading it and we always will talk about the book. I mean, we always talk about reading because he's a big reader and I'm a big reader too, I guess a big reader. And long story short, we were always talking about it that I got to the point that I was like, look, like you have to come on. Yeah. Like you have to come into the episode oh, and talk it, it about it. It was more than that because I, uh, at a certain point I said, hey, Alejandro, this, this has such a good stuff that I, I like to underline, but I don't feel well by underlining, you know, some, someone else's book. I said that, don't be an idiot, just go ahead and not yeah. underline it. So when he said that, would you come to the episode? He said, hey, no way, I have nothing to say <laughs> there. Hey, you underline my book. So I said, well, now that you mentioned it, you know, I'll be more than happy to do that. Yeah, so I have to. I I'm, have I'm to. happy to be here. I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not. I've just said what are my qualifications to be talking about Sam Swalton book, you know? Yeah, well, that's something that he's told us like before filming the episode, like what are my qualifications to be to have an opinion about a book and then we told you what no, I, feel, I feel important by the way I, yeah it's really important now, so i appreciate you guys inviting me of course of course no but besides so besides we'll, we'll get into the book but besides the the book and my dad obviously being a reader my dad's a lawyer like we mentioned and my dad's actually had a few clients that work in the like in the retail industry, in the retail industry. so he had besides sam walton giving you the insight of the book of like what happens behind doors the creation of the company my dad kind of could relate to that and he had his own stories but whatever so get into the book um so what do you think uh, I love the book. I, I certainly, um, I mean, I'm not completely um, an alien to, to retail because I, as an attorney, I'm not related to retail, but we had for many, many years this important client in, in South America where we come from. And um, that client would be a, a very important retailer in, in Venezuela, actually the, 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 the largest chain pharmacy. So I, I had opportunity, which I, very, I feel very, very proud of, of participating as an external counsel to that company okay. and i saw the company grew grow from probably i don't know whatever 50 something um, um stores to up to 200 and something when i i i was no longer related to the company and uh, the reason being that uh, when we started being attorneys for the company uh it was a small company and it grew so fast and so um, it became so big that it ended up by having their own legal department inside 
So we kind of, you know, got fired. We, we got, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the, the nice thing was when when the company was growing, they they uh, realized they needed to have um, um, what they called external board of directors. Right. And I had the great opportunity, and I guess I, I was lucky enough to be invited to be part of that. Awesome. So I I, I had um, the opportunity of sitting in, a, in in that company for eleven years almost, and and seeing all the growth that came with the good things they did there. And uh, reading the book of Mr. Uh, um, Walton is, is, is just, I mean, keeping all the differences, but it's, it's just kind of, you know, going back to so many things I, I kind of live, you know, um, yeah. through my own experience in, in a much different way and a much different scale, of course. So in, I know, I, I know, I imagine that as an external uh, attorney, you probably didn't see like much of the operations. But as a board member, you probably Absolutely. Like, yes, had to take... Yes, uh, yes. that's to... why I say I, I was very lucky because I probably, I, I mean... I, I, let me use this small um, 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 commercial time here to say <laughs> that, you know, attorneys are always very, very important I mean, in whatever you're doing. And it does some things that he says in the book. And uh, I just want to say that uh, the legal part of it was very interesting. Was I was very passionate about what I was doing for that company in terms of looking at the growth and all the... They, they, the things they did and that how they develop all the, the thing. I mean, the real merit is on the people, uh, the, the family that owned that company right. and all the workers were there. I was only uh, just like putting like a very small uh, grain of, of, of sand, you know, yeah. there uh, as an advisor. So then again, I, I, I think that was very lucky to be able to do that. So that is probably why I enjoy so much reading the book. For example, my dad has an anecdote um, going through specifics that can, can you talk about the impact? This is super like specific, but can you talk about the impact that plastic bags having a retailer? Like, well, I remember it was like one percent out of the final numbers. Gross profits, not gross profit, like correct. revenues. One percent of revenues. So it was so important. So that's why I, I I certainly understand why we're coming. I mean, not only because of the ecological thing, not the right. green thing, but it is very. I mean, it's very wise to invite, uh, somehow to try to, to make that more reasonable. You know? yeah. And, and are, do we know if paper bags are more or less expensive than plastic? I, I, can't, I can't tell because I, what I, in my experience there, they were only the plastic thing. Okay. So I understand that, that, that the paper things are more ecological, whatever, but right. I, that is not something I could tell. I, wow. I, I remember I was very impressed when I saw the, those numbers. No, it's interesting that one yeah. percent of revenue is going to plastic bags. I mean, yeah. you, yeah. you at that time, at that time, now that time. I, I can't tell what it is okay. now, but at that time it was no, very, that's, very that's, tough. That's incredible. So, besides besides the retailing aspect, obviously in the book he talks about. So we always say that in autobiographies, there's something specific that differentiates the autobiography to other ones. So Phil Knight, he focuses a lot on Nike, um, what it takes. Last episode we did last week, which you guys should watch by the way. He focuses on how you can become an ent like an entrepreneur and what it takes to be have a successful business. Here, the main focus is obviously Walmart and how he built Walmart. And one of the big things that we discussed was the management and the way that he he created, like the way that he approached management and he created pretty much the biggest company in the entire world. So what are the things that I'd point out to you when it came to the management and well, what he did? I think that the, the whole book is, is a great um, uh, lesson about management. He provides a couple of things that are, I mean, you will probably not read in terms of management something you have not heard before because I, I, there is nothing uh, magical about retail in, in, in particular that right. you could say, well, you know, it's like a great discovery. Um, so I think that the, the, the things he takes you through uh, in the book are a lot very interesting. I think he, he, he talks about his winner attitude that he had. I think that that has a lot of value or how he was a motivator to his uh, team or uh, how he had this... Um, particular uh, management way of delegating, but at the same time checking on the person that he first motivated and, and delegated to. Um, that kind of things are very important. And, and again, if you allow me to come to, to the commercial part of it, of okay, the legal part, he really underlines how important it was. He says something very impressive about he learned something like, because of the legal things, he learned how tough the world could be, which I really was very impressed by. And, you know, I, I think that the whole book is really an, an excellent um, managerial um, tool for, for whoever is interested in the, in the management um, subjects. And, and his, that I remember that he talks so, you want to talk about the family, how the family got involved, especially his brother, his son. But in, in the legal, just a small thing, his son, one of his sons became a, one of his sons became a lawyer. Was he ever like general counsel of the company or something? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yes. Um, I, 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 when I read that, I, I thought, wow, that should be very tough to be Sam Walton's 
So, oh, yes. and at the same time, being the attorney for that big company, yeah, I, I really know. don't, I would have loved to be in his pants at, at that point, you know, because <laughs> I, as an attorney, you have to be unbiased. You sure, have... sure. And at the same time, I mean, having a, a father so successful and, and being the attorney for that big company is per se already a big, you know, a big burden. Right. So besides being the son of the boss and being responsible for all that, that should be very tough. Yeah. yeah. And so we actually read we read a book of, called Black Blood that gets into like the legal specifics of what it takes to build a company. And for me, it was crazy to see how keeping emails is important, having everything written down. And I had never, because in college they teach you about the business and management side of it, but you never really really think about all the legal aspects and the legal repercussions that your business could have. Absolutely, and that's, that's Absolutely. crazy to think about. I mean, that that's a general frame for whatever. A business does the legal frame is permanently there either you want to look at it or not either you want to spend money on that or not um i i, I frequently use with my clients um um <laughs> they, they've i used to say that um, um expensive help is cheap yeah because you better have the best attorney you could pay for rich that or that says that he says that something they should never like spend low money on is lawyers yeah. like you should spend a lot of money on lawyers Sure. And we have a saying in Spanish that uh, what's cheap ends up being more expensive in the long term. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> sorry. For, so when, so when someone starts to, to go over a little bit of, of, of the book, and please correct me because I, I read this book over a year ago, but he graduates college, he goes, he serves in the army and all the things, and then he decides to open up the equivalent of a $1 store which back then in the 60s, or I think it was the 50 when he opened it, what were they, a nickel and a dime? No, it's a, a dime store. A I, dime I, store. I remember my mother, my, my, my parents, your, your grandparents, went to Michigan um, um, uh, University, the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor in the 50s. I, I wasn't born at that time, and my brothers were. And uh, my mother used to talk about the 10 cent stores, which I think is what he talks about. I wow. never, I never saw those. I, I, I came, you know, when it was a, <laughs> the, 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 the dollar thing, the dollar thing, which will probably become, you know, more than that in a while. Inflation. Yeah. And okay, so he opens up a store like that, that is a, is a franchise and whatever that, that ends up becoming Walmart. But talk to me about, about the, the, the involvement that the brother, um, Sam Walton's brother had in, had in that, like in the entire development I, I of the business. I, th that is a classical thing I've seen many times in very successful people. They began working with the family. I, once I read this, this um, 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 information about the most of like 80% of the family being, uh, I'm sorry, 80% of the companies being uh, family owned. Okay. okay. And, and that is a very good explanation, very basic thing that you could say is, uh, probably because when you are working with your family, you can get rid of many controls and many accounting things and 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 and, and uh, uh, um, audits and things because of the trust. Right. So I'm not saying that you don't trust your employees. I'm just saying that it's like a natural thing that if your brother is managing something, you don't have to double check it. You just assume it's He's fine. He's probably not going to steal. From correct. You. Yeah. Correct. Probably. So, so, but I think he makes very clear, uh, Sam Walton makes it very clear. He worked with his brother and he has very kind words towards his, wor uh, towards his brothers, um, Rob, uh, kind right. of, of, yeah, of job so. and thing he did. But he was very clear that he was the boss. Right. Yeah. Okay. That also happens. I, I once read uh, um, a biography recommend to you on, on Walt Disney. So Walt Disney used to work with his brother. I think it was Roy his name. Okay. And, and Roy was a, was a genius. I mean, was the guy who was really managing all the things related to money. But when they were about to make the company, they, I mean, Walt Disney and, and the book says, states it very clearly, he said, listen, this is all Disney. This is not the brothers Disney. Wow. So he doesn't go that far, Mr. Walton, I mean, Sam Walton, but somehow it is clear he was, he was the guy running the show. Yeah, it is inherent. Like it's, you have to set the boundaries early on so Correct. there's no trouble later Correct. on. Yes. And, and family was a big thing in the book because he talks, he even, he, when he's, Starting the book, he says that even today, Walmart is a company that is fully owned. Well, not fully owned, but it's majority owned by the family. Like the Walters are still bi the biggest owners of, of Walmart. Yes, he. I, I think um, he insists so much on what he, I mean, on the partnership. He says that the whole thing is the partnership formula. And he says it's a partnership among the, um, among the, 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 the shareholders, but also it's a partnership with the employees because he wants all of them to also participate in the in the in the stocks 
So he says from the employee that is uh, the greeter who is at the very entrance of the store uh, uh, up to, to the, the drivers taking care of the, you know, driving the trucks, they are all employees and also most of them are also stockholders. So yeah. he calls it the, the, the partnership. And he uses the same word when he talks about his sons or his wife uh, being part of the company. Which is, I think, is very, very wise. One of the one of one of my classes for college, my limited knowledge from from Walmart was that we, Sam Walton was a lot about people, right? Yes. Yeah. And a big thing that that people say, my my dad says it is that when you want to motivate someone, you can give them as much money as, as that person wants, but as if you set incentives, that person's probably reach that incentive and that's it. But if you give him a share of the company, if you give him stock they're going to feel part of something special Absolutely. and that's going to motivate them to go above and beyond and want the company to grow. Yeah. And yeah. that's, that's yeah, interesting. Be, because he has this, this uh, feeling of co-ownership and that, that's what changes everything. He thinks, I mean, he, he feels and he really is working for himself. He has a very small, tiny piece of that company and that, that changes the whole thing. Right. And I have a question for both of you because it's interesting to me that obviously nowadays Walmart is, is huge. Mm -hmm. But in a, in a low cost, low margin business, like the way to make a lot of money is with quantity, you have to sell a, a lot of items. Yeah. So how did he grow so fast with Walmart? I don't know if he mentions it on the book. Oh, yeah. I don't know what you have to say, Alejandro. I, you, you can cover more of the specifics, but one of the cool things that he had is that he was a big uh, pilot. Like he had, a, he had an airplane and he would travel around. So when he started the first store, he would do things like he would get in his airplane in Arkansas, where he had the, the first store, and just fly to the neighboring states looking for cheap things to sell. So he has a story. I, you told me that he like went to another state, purchased like cheap lingerie. At like the very beginning, and, yes. At the beginning, and then he sold it. So that was one of the things he just kept like pushing. Well, I, I was very impressed by something he says as a, of one of his principles, and he says the importance of think small. And it's great to listen from someone like, like this guy, uh, this gentleman who did such a, an important company, uh, when he states that thinking small is a formula. And of course, he says, well, thinking small is what keeps us growing because the day we start thinking as the big companies we, and, and we behave like them, we probably stop right. having this growth yeah. that we have. So I think you will probably find the, the book, the, 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 the quote, and you will probably want to, to use that. Oh, yeah. um, but the interesting thing is that he, he insists so much in that. And uh, he, of course, he, as, as you know, everyone else in, 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 in management, but he particularly kind of underlines that very much. He says the importance of change and react to change. Okay. So those are probably among the things. Never that, being stagnant. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. he has, he, because you mentioned the, the, back then, the idea of just going to a store pretty much like Walmart, now that this, maybe like Target and all these different stores that have pretty much everything. Uh, a super store, a super center like they have it in Walmart wasn't a thing. And you mentioned that the way that came in about was because he saw it in Europe. Was it something like that? Yes, I was. Oh, that impressed me very much. He, I mean, he describes himself very few times in the book. There is something he does I would like to comment on. Um, uh, but he says that he, he would, you know, break other people's rules and try to keep his own. And he, he, he explains he, he respected a lot the people who would come against his rules, but would reason on that and bring, you know, the why and, and the how and, and, and you know, and, the, and, and, and bring, bring good ideas, let's say. Um, but particularly, he, he says that he saw the, the format of um, big, big, big stores that are called the, the great surfaces in Europe, that like they call that, like, like uh, um, I'm thinking of, of Carrefour, is of being, Carrefour being probably the most important one. There are mm -hmm. others. Uh, probably Casino is also one of those. And uh, he says that they apply the formula, but and it did not work. I, I don't. He doesn't get into the details, but he says that that was the, the beginning of what are currently the superstores, right. which are just to, to, to add something personal, the ones I like the most, the most, yeah. because those are the ones where you find like tools and this and that and things for home and, and every kind. You find that it has like a small Home Depot. Within. Because my dad's ranking his favorite stores in the U.S. are Walmart, followed by Home Depot, right? I, absolutely. I, I think I with all due respect <laughs> for the other stores, but I think that if you had, I mean, I, I probably, I'm, I'm probably very basic, but 
I, I think I could survive the U.S. with the Home Depot and the Walmart, Walmart. and that's it. I don't need much more than that. <laughs> so another another fun another like fun fact specific about the book is that he he had a big thing. So motivating and you know dear kind of he had a big thing of just showing up to random stores around the U.S. Especially when he would travel like with her. like his competitors. N- well, both. So he will go to his own stores, legal pad in hand. He was known for always having a yellow legal pad and like taking notes and like walking to random stores and like talking to the associates as he calls his employees and also going to the competitors. And right. he has a story that he goes into a competitor holding a, a recording device and he's literally like walking, like he will literally cross the street, go to the competitors and say, they're selling toothpaste at $1 and they will keep just pushing down the price. Obviously capitalism like crazy. But <laughs> the funny story is that he goes to a store one day, he mentions about the state, I don't remember. And he sees someone at the door greeting people. And he's like, hey, you know, this is weird. You know, he walks in, he's like, hey, how are you? I think you don't recognize him. And then he goes and talks to the manager and the manager explains that they were having an issue with people stealing things. So the only way they could that they could go about that was putting someone at the door that greeted people coming in and saw the people getting out. Right. So you see, you kind of get the behind the scenes of why there's people at Walmart that greet you at the door, which is one of the things. And another thing I wanted to connect it with is my dad also has a story about, you know, pretty much like the, the percentage of, of things that people steal in retailers. And, and the pharmacy that we were talking about at the beginning, there's a story about how, how like the percentage of, of things are pretty much stolen every year. And you had a, a fun fact about yes, the Yes, well, it's not that fun because it was a tragedy. I mean, accepting, <laughs> accepting that you are being, I mean, that your client are stealing stuff. And you can't do anything. And, and also realizing that sometimes not only your clients, but some of your probably unmotivated uh, uh, employees wow. are, as well, uh, taking the stuff they haven't paid for is is a real I mean it's a real concern for the company, and uh, so a lot of measures were taken, and the the numbers were very high. The numbers were very high. So a whole campaign not only to encourage people not to do that, you know, and to protect you know the stuff. Uh, the, the Alejandro was surprised by the fact they told him that sometime the company would find like like a, a, a soap um, would be. Only the, you will find that the, only the case of the soap wow. remain because the soap has been taken out and the case again closed and put back to the to the shelf. So that 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 is the kind of things that happen, you know. And by having videos and educating people and having controls and mainly internally, what what really changed the thing was the day that the company probably decided to. Um, um, you know, go ahead with the legal part of enforcing right. the respect for someone else's property, you know, and that really changed the whole thing. Because if you don't, especially with Walmart, when you have so low, such low margins, if you don't enforce like Absolutely. people stealing, you're losing Absolutely. a lot of money because Absolutely. you're not making that much money for each unit. And if you're losing units, that's a lot. That's a big cost that you're, Correct. especially when you're starting out. Was that a, was that a, like a like a set cost that they will calculate? Like you know this percentage. Was there your- was. I can't remember. I I mean it, it's been a while since I I left um um, um that board, uh but I I I don't have the number now. But it was an important thing. Yeah, it they important. estimated it yearly and just. Well, it not, was not only estimated. It was whatever the difference was between what the inventory oh, of and, when they and did the, the inventory, inventory and what they yeah. sold. You know, so yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, and and also you know, checking that at different levels of the chain, uh, whether that happened at the at the at the re- at the store or that happened at the deposits, whatever at the at the you know, say deposit, say um, um, warehouses. warehouses. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> That's my Spanishismo. Uh, so that that was. That was the kind of job that had to be and done. And that's something that's something that Walmart pioneered or was one of the first ones. They weren't stagnant and they implemented an inventory system that it was we in, in accounting we call it perpetual, which is that as you were selling stuff, as you scan it, that already does your inventory and it's easier to keep track of what you have or and what you what you're being stolen on. And- For sure, I, I think that I think that uh, he tells a lot about that. And uh, he has, I mean, Walmart and, and particularly Mr. Walton, they, they had pioneered a lot of um, changes in the industry. I mean, they changed the, the whole industry. And um, um, I think many people have followed them. You know, one of the things, for example, that I found is great about going to one of these stores, and I have no interest in Walmart beyond, you know, having as a client. As a client. But one of the most <laughs> important things, people don't realize how much time they save you. Because if you happen to buy whatever, I don't want to make a specific example, but when you get there, you already they already made the, the, the important part of your homework to understand what is it that you need. Unless you are someone very different from the rest of the people, right. normally you'll get there, for, for, I, mean, I mean, whatever the product, you'll get there what most people need. So they already kind of put aside what you will not need and, and makes your choice much easier, I would say. Yeah. 
the in especially in the technology side what burns it with the perpetual and 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 that part as well they spend a lot of they spend a lot of money even in the book he explains in technology so david glass which is one of the big executives spends a lot of money in the technology aspect in, in things like the, the perpetual system and and staying ahead with that and in the fact of change and and what you're saying with with making things available a few key points in the book are actually lost nowadays. He envisions a customer service that is more relatable to like Publix, the, the pharmacy, the, the chain that we have here in, in Florida that associates or employees walk up to you and ask you, hey, like, do you need something? That's what he envisioned and that's what he actually wanted with his employees. Nowadays, that's one of the things that, that you lose with, with Walmart. And another important thing, which is pretty much the biggest competitor now, nowadays is e-commerce. Right. Obviously, you know, uh, Amazon has been, sta- has been taking a big portion. Doug McMillan, which is the CEO that you have right now, has was pretty much the first CEO that said, you know, this is an actual threat. We have to, we have to target and try to try to come up with a big solution with try to impact the e-commerce side. But but they've grown. They uh, Walmart has recently like released and they're growing on the e-commerce side. They created Obviously, a Prime membership, right? Uh, like a Prime, like an Amazon Prime equivalent in in Walmart. And with the customer service part, it's 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 a trade off of like wanting to keep costs low and having and also, a huge store because uh, having a huge store. And one of the things that I, I learned outside of the book is that Walmart has their warehouses in distant places. They don't have it in down in downtown places. That way, they I don't know if they mentioned on the book on the book, but they save a lot of rent yeah. that way. Absolutely. He he. Not only that, he mentions um, Barney that uh, their stores were always established somewhere where it was much cheaper. Uh, to pay for the square foot, right? So they and then what they found out was that around their stores people would start coming, but they that that was like right. the principle not only for the warehouses also for the for stores. the city yes and, and for the city also yeah. you're putting the store it brings a lot of commerce and I, want, I, I wanted to ask you guys is Walmart because I know these companies that keep costs low they normally don't have like corporate jets or like they keep everything like really simple Th- that that's Do- part of the thing that he says about you know thinking small. He doesn't. I mean, actually, I understand that Walmart has several planes. At least what he mentioned in the book, okay. which, is, which was written a lot of years ago, uh, probably thirty years ago mm-hmm. or so. But uh, at the end, of course, they do need them. Well, it's, it's not like the principle, you know. It's something like the company tried to keep, like, uh, because he used he would always say that every single penny that they spend in something different than making prices lowest Lower. possible yeah. was something that was going against the like the like the principles of the company because uh, he's a very very frugal guy like he has for example a personal story is that the day that he comes out as the richest man in the u.s which he was for for some time he starts getting like a bunch of reporters like when he's cutting his hair when he's driving his dogs right. and he says that he was super mad because an article comes out saying um Mr. Like Sam Walton drives a pickup truck and he's like, what the heck am I going to take my dogs in a, like a Rolls Royce? Like, what am I like? What am I going to do? But he's a very frugal guy. But and- I like that. I like that. Really yeah, well. I think I, I think that it speaks very well, not only from about him, but about the company as well. Yeah. And the headquarters of Walmart in in and then uh, I, for, I forgot where it was, but are known for being ugly. No, but it's a, it's a random city, I think, right? No, it's a city. It's, a city. it's Arkansas, but it's what's in Arkansas. Arkansas. City what was is city? Bentonville? No, it wasn't Bentonville. Yeah. It's in Bentonville, Bentonville, yeah. We have, uh, no joke, like my dad and I have a trip planned to that we, city. Yes. Yes. And there's a museum, museum of Walmart. They, 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 museum of Walmart they made the an old store. store. They make it, I mean, very, that is very typical, but you know, <laughs> they make like the museum and uh, that's nice. I, I, it's I, closed I, during COVID right now, so that's one of the reasons why we haven't gone recently. I have a question. You mentioned that Walmart is your favorite store in the U.S. Well, it's, it's not that. I mean, there's a, I've, I, I try to be practical. And right. when you're looking after several stuff, I mean, I, I'm not the kind of guy who's going to go to the, to the shopping mall or spend several hours in that right. stuff. So one place where you go and you get whatever you're needing and you grab a couple of stuff for, for home. And, uh, and if you need like a tool, a basic tool, I'm not right. talking about sophisticated stuff. Uh, and you need some bolts and some this and that, and uh, probably you're lacking a couple of, you know, um, uh, jogging shorts or whatever. <laughs> you get everything from there. It's not like probably not the best quality ever, right? But you know that you're paying something that is going For to be fair price. and it's going to last you whatever time you. I mean, whatever. I, I think it's very fair store, so I, I really like it. And what's what would keep what keeps you from going to Walmart instead of getting your tools or or everything you need from Amazon? Let's say. So he doesn't have. Amazon. Well, you number one, you know, as 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 um um as a certified boomer. Yeah, I'm, a boomer. yeah. I'm still I'm like the very last part of the boomer generation, <laughs> right? I was just about when the boomer generation was about to expire. I was born there, and um, I I really think it's very convenient when you get into your computer and make that. But you lose a, a good part of the 
of the experience of you know testing what is the the screwdriver you like the most and uh, what is the size that you really need and what is it is that a, a Philip or whatever uh, and and you know and and so you like the experience of going and well actually touching I, things about I like for yourself uh, um, Walmart very much I'm not to say that going to Walmart is like flying business class not at all. <laughs> But it's a very nice experience. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I identify myself a lot with a lot of principles that the company has. And and, and we talk because we talk about this a lot. And what we think is, I don't think I don't think that Walmart will ever go bankrupt. And I think the business model that I have right now it will still work. There's still always going to be people that will want to go and like experience a few things. There's a few specifics, and my dad's like, yeah, just order that online, and like that way we get it tomorrow. But for example. Amazon can be competitive in prices. Amazon is the most competitive, I'd say, for example, in books. Like Amazon has the best prices. Things that go, and this is my estimate, and we talked about this. Things that go below five dollars will always be cheaper in Walmart. Okay. Like every single time I have to buy something, like I have to buy uh, a notebook the other day, you can't order on Amazon because Amazon, I believe so, I have no proof of this. They start making margins once you pass like that five dollar mark, that five dollar mark. Okay. Because even with Prime memberships factor in, they're not gonna make a profit. That's what I take. And there's just a few things, just like just like there's people that still go to bookstores because they want to sit down and like read a few pages. There's people like my dad and all, and me, like everyone. That there's a few things that they rather go to the store and, I read, and buy. Yeah, the price I, I want in to person. grab and, and and take and feel a little bit what what you're getting. No, no yeah. and and the good thing about Walmart, which we mentioned, is that they're growing in the online space. So at the end of the day, they have your your physical stores, and they also have that online presence if you want to get something. Sure. Like we always say, like I like I purchased a a, a stock from Blackstone last week because I read because I read that book. Are you gonna purchase a Walmart? I want to purchase a Walmart <laughs> stock, and I want to purchase a Nike stock, a Nike stock since we also read that book. So one last thing, um, do you wanted to? Do you haven't told us what it was, but the biggest confession that Sam Walton shares in his well, book. Well, it's not that. It's, it's it's I think I think that the guy does. Um, um, uh, Mr. Walton does a great job with the book he writes because I feel that the book is a kind of a testament for his company. He apparently, what according with what he refers there, he he gets involved into um, he gets di diagnosed with a very sad um, um, cancer, yeah. yeah, something like that, terminal disease, and and mm -hmm. yeah, terminal disease, and, and 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 I think that when he writes the book, he wants like to leave a message for the whole company and his family, of course, and he does a great job. But at the same time, I always, with the legal frame in, in, in <laughs> mind, I think that he refrained from telling many things he would have like loved to, say. to, to yeah. say. And uh, I think that it's this particular mention that he does about himself, but he puts into, uh, into in a way that he's not talking about himself. He describes this gentleman and he describes, uh, may I have the, the, uh, the book to, uh. to see if I can quote that very... Um, so he says, that um, he has this problem with the company, and at a certain point, he goes and 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 puts the the person, someone he 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 trusts on, and he says, "But we had a real maverick named Ed Nagy, who was then the district manager. Ed is a fella who's always stepping on toes or breaking one rule or another. He's constantly in trouble, and he likes to try new things. And I have to admit, he reminds me a bit of myself as a youngster. So I think that." Probably he doesn't want to admit uh, a couple of things that he describes through um, the, the the profile that he gives for for this uh, employee he has, and um, I think that that is a very it's it's very um, 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 a very a very open um, 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 reflection on how he looks to himself. But he doesn't put it in in his own terms, right? In, in, in there, because one of the things that my dad will explain to me is that these books are obviously proofread, like proofread by by a lot of people, but they're also proofread by a lot of the PR people of like the company Walmart, and yeah, the person and attorneys, of course, and attorneys, of yeah, course. Yeah, because any any book is going to have an edit, and the edit if it's a literature or whatever, the the edit is just trying to cut a couple of errors or small mistakes or whatever. But when the person like like Mr. Walton uh, writes a book about the company, uh, they have to make sure they are not getting in legal trouble. Right. Of so course. probably we, I mean, probably a good part of what I would have liked to listen or read is probably out of the book because of the legal implications. Right. Yeah. So the person is not completely free and 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 has, you know, a white page to write and say whatever he wants, like so many other authors would probably do. He's of course he's under a lot of limitations and boundaries and 
and no, no, you cannot say Non-disclosure that. Non-disclosure is probably... Yeah, correct. Especially yeah. for a person, like, he ends up getting, I think it's a Presidential Medal of Freedom, like, a few weeks before he dies. So, when you correct. have that much recognition, besides building such a big company, sure. that's a big focus. This has been an, also, an absolute pleasure. Um, I've wanted to do this episode since a while ago, and I didn't do it because there were too many things to talk about. I'm super happy we ended up having, like, a podcast style and such an amazing guest <laughs> to discuss <laughs> it so much. Thank you for the most important. non <laughs> No bias at all. Um, but, yeah, any final remarks? Anything no, wait, well, what's, your, what's your rating? Oh, yeah, so from one to five, what's your rating? What would you and we do that. I, I would give it a five, of course. A five? Yeah, five. Absolutely, yes, it's okay. a great book. Great yeah, book. I'm, I'm and and, and not, uh, last but not least, he mentions a couple of stuff on the personal side that I, I, I please allow me to remark. He talks about the importance of family, of course, and he talks about his hobbies, very important. Someone as successful and so busy who worked like probably 23 hours and a half every day, you know, uh, having a hobby was probably part of his success. And the other part I, I really loved, like very much also, was that he mentioned the religious part of it. Whatever the religion, I, I think having right. a religion is an asset, definitely. It's important. Yeah. And he, he, he underlines that very much. And he says he would go to whatever his, his, his um, 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 uh, faith was every, every weekend, whatever. Uh, and I think that is important. So he also brings to his book his personal dimension that I think is, 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 is very interesting as well. Yeah, it's important because yeah. it's what makes the person that created such yes, a big company. And, exactly. the hobbies, and the hobbies are huge, especially for myself that I never had like big hobbies besides like running and napping. Now that I have like book reading and I'm always like constantly searching for new hobbies because that's something that's important and I think that's a that's a really important. Mm -hmm. We were talking about it. It's a break from like the everyday pressure. Yeah, you know? yeah. yes, it's, 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 it's important. It's part it's part of the success, I guess. Of course, yeah. Alfredo, it was a pleasure. Thank Mine, you so absolutely. much. I appreciate anytime, it. Anytime, anytime. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Feel very proud of your invitation. If Thank you guys you. liked the video, if you liked Alfredo, like the video, subscribe, comment what any thoughts you might have, and we'll see you guys next week for the next episode. Thank you.